Divulging who is next in line to bite the big one can have a serious impact on how fans en masse engage with a piece of media. And this is arguably no more a big deal than in TV. Every so often, the thrill of the surprise will be tainted somewhat by an overly chatty or telling cast member. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie for What Culture, here with 10 actors who spoiled huge TV deaths. Number 10. Misha Barton, The O.C. The OC's third season concluded with the shocking death of one of the teen drama series' main characters, Marissa Cooper, who is involved in a serious car accident and subsequently succumbs to her injuries in sometimes boyfriend Ryan's arms. Well, it would have been shocking had Barton not spilled the beans literally hours before the episode premiered in the US. Barton was interviewed by Access Hollywood the day before the scene was due to air, where she flat out said, quote, It's true, it's true. My character dies. My character has been through so, so much much and there's really nothing more left for her to do. And so while Barton's potential departure from the show had been whispered about for months due to the actress apparently wishing to pursue film opportunities, ruining the surprise so close to go time naturally left many of the OC's hormone adult fans absolutely baffled. Then again, considering how divisive Marissa's death was among the fandom, perhaps this was a merciful case of giving them a little heads up. Number 9. Kit Harrington, Game of Thrones in the final episode of Game of Thrones fifth season, Jon Snow is killed by Alyssa Thorne and his men, and remains one of the series' all-time most shocking moments, no matter that Snow was ultimately resurrected early in the next season. But Harrington inadvertently gave the game away when, in June 2014, he revealed that he was contractually prevented from cutting his hair while playing the part. And so, when Harrington showed up to the premiere of his new film, Testament of Youth, in early 2015, with a short crop, many fans took it as proof that Jon Snow was going to die in the upcoming season. Evidently, the fact that Harrington had only a small role in season 5's first few episodes pre-resurrection allowed him to get a haircut without ruffling too many feathers at HBO. Ultimately, this was less a case of Harrington being careless than how insatiably Thrones' dogged fanbase will pursue every possible lead in the search of cast iron spoilers. That said, Harrington probably should have kept the hair claws tidbit to himself if he wanted an easier life. Number 8. Juliette Lewis, Yellow Jackets In Yellow Jackets' second season finale, adult Natalie is killed when she's accidentally stuck with a needle containing phenobarbital by Misty. The death wasn't terribly surprising to the series' dedicated fans, though, many of whom figured that Natalie wasn't long for this world after Juliette Lewis took part in a cast Q&A way back in November 2021, the very month that the show's first season premiered. In the closing moments of the Q&A, a visibly agitated Lewis speaks about how playing Natalie is, quote, depressing and, quote, not what she expected, before making a speedy beeline off the stage. As a result, fans immediately began to suspect that Lewis's tenure on the show would be short-lived and that she'd be killed off at the nearest opportunity that made sense. And so, given that Yellow Jacket's first season was already in the can at the time of this Q&A, her death had to be saved for season 2, and presumably happened because Lewis was positively donezo with this part. Number 7. Vagnomora, Narcos now, to be completely fair here, many would argue that you can't really spoil actual world events. Or at the very least, speaking of someone's real-life demise within the context of a spoiler seems a little bit tacky. All the same, there were evidently those who decided to watch Netflix's Pablo Escobar drama series Narcos without any prior knowledge of the Colombian drug kingpin's life. Not least that, perhaps unsurprisingly, he was killed by the authorities in 1993. And so some were miffed when actor Wagner Mora, who played Escobar in the series, straight up confirmed that his character's death would be featured in the show's second season. Mora said in an interview with Chelsea Handler, quote, Season 2 is from the day Pablo escapes to his death. Pablo's going to die this season. Despite this revelation angering some, the show's executive producer Eric Newman defended Mora's loose lips, likening it to people still going to see Titanic despite knowing how the real story ends. And Newman was evidently right, as even with the outcome being known ahead of time, season 2 performed well enough that Narcos was renewed for a third, which focused on the Cali Cartel's dominance of the cocaine trade in light of Escobar's death. Number 6. Sabrina Impacciatore, The White Lotus in The White Lotus's second season, Sabrina Impacciatore played hotel manager Valentina, and though her character survived just fine, Impacciatore ended up accidentally letting the season's big climactic death spoiler out of the bag more than a month ahead of time. While being interviewed in November 2022, mere days after the season premiered, the cast were asked who's most likely to fall off the edge of a boat. 
Though she wasn't the only cast member to name drop Jennifer Coolidge, her interaction in the interview did prove to be unexpectedly telling. After she emphatically mentions Coolidge, fellow cast members froze awkwardly for a few seconds, seemingly out of fear that she'd just spoiled the season's ending. After all, Coolidge's character Tanya does indeed fall off a boat and drown in the season 2 finale, prompting the other actors to immediately shift the conversation away from Coolidge before Sabrina herself seems to realise what's going on and changes her answer to her self. Ironically, how blatantly the trio panicked and shifted the dialogue elsewhere only made it much more obvious that Tanya was actually going to die. Number 5. Jack Gleason, Game of Thrones Joffrey Baratheon's death in the second episode of Game of Thrones' fourth season remains one of the most satisfying TV deaths of the entire last decade. Seeing this Weasley tyrant die a slow, agonising death by poison was a rare, true fist-pumping moment for Thrones fans, albeit one which actor Gleason tipped his hat to many months prior. In November 2013, mere days after season 4 wrapped up production, Gleason revealed that he planned to retire from acting as soon as his commitments to the show were finished. Some fans who hadn't read George George R. R. Martin's books felt that this was an odd thing for an actor to say just three seasons into a show expected to run much, much longer, especially with Joffrey being one of its primary antagonists. And so this was enough to clue many fans in that Joffrey was going to perish in the fourth season, and gloriously he did. As for Gleason, he took a lengthy hiatus from acting in the years following his Thrones tenure ending, though has returned to the screen in a number of less high-profile efforts in recent times. Number 4. Adrian Lester, Trigger Point The first episode of British crime thriller series Trigger Point ends with bomb disposal expert Joel Nutkins getting caught in an explosion after investigating a suspiciously parked van. In fairness, while the episode ends without confirming Joel's death, given both his proximity to the van when the bomb detonates and that what appears to be one of his severed arms is found amid the carnage, it's pretty fair to assume that he's probably dead. All the same, those swept up in the drama began feverishly speculating about Joel's fate on social media, with some even optimistically believing that he may have somehow survived. But the scuttlebutt was quickly put to bed by actor Adrian Lester himself, who tweeted two days after the episode aired, listing a number of projects in which his characters have been killed off and counting trigger point among them, adding that Joel had been quote, blown up. Lester quickly received blowback from fans who felt that he had derailed any suspense leading up to the next episode, prompting an apologetic Lester to delete the offending tweet and admit that he was too soon in posting it. And indeed, when the second episode aired the next week, Joel was confirmed to have been killed in the explosion, ensuring that the actor's time on the show was for a mere single episode. Number 3. Kevin Spacey, House of Cards the spoiled demise of House of Cards protagonist Frank Underwood is a very special case, because it was Spacey's own personal conduct that made it clear what would become of his ruthless former president of the United States. Shortly after the show's sixth season began production, numerous sexual assault allegations were levelled against Spacey, prompting Netflix to cut ties with the actor and reshape season six around Frank's wife and now president Claire Underwood. While fans and the press alike speculated about how the show would deal with Frank's absence, there was really only one feasible option and that was killing him off screen. Frank was such an integral part of House of Cards that nothing short of a sudden death would have made any sense at all. And so that's precisely what the writers did, having Frank die between seasons under mysterious circumstances. Unlike every other entry on this list, Spacey made it clear what would become of Frank before a single frame of the final season had been shot, as a result of his gross alleged misconduct. While Frank dying in the final season wouldn't exactly have been a shock regardless, without Spacey's obviously necessary firing, there at least would have been some suspense over his ultimate fate. Number 2. Bob Odenkirk, Better Call Saul of course, Jimmy McGill, aka Saul Goodman, survives to the end of Better Call Saul, though that didn't stop the venerable Bob Odenkirk from accidentally spoiling another prominent character's death with a careless Twitter post. In December 2021, Odenkirk posted a picture of himself on the show's set with co-star Patrick Fabian, who plays lawyer Howard Hamlin. However, fans quickly noticed that Fabian had a noticeable streak of red in his hair, seemingly indicating that his character would be seriously injured or, as many guessed, killed. And so so it was less of a shock than it should have been when Hamlin was indeed shot in the head in the sixth season's mid-season finale. Hilariously, perhaps in an attempt to avoid confirming the fan theories, Odenkirk never deleted the tweet, which ended up getting almost 25,000 likes. The day after the episode aired in May 2022, however, Odenkirk acknowledged his mistake, admitting that he quote, screwed up by failing to realise that Fabian's gory makeup was visible in the shot. Number 1. Alan Cumming, The Good Wife 
And finally, a decidedly more harmless act of death spoiling now then, when the good wife's Alan Cumming, who played campaign strategist and crisis manager Eli Gold, went around town telling anyone who would listen about the show's big shocking death. In the second half of the show's fifth season, Will Gardner is shot and killed in the courtroom by his client, as left the fanbase positively apoplectic. However, it's genuinely surprising that Will's death wasn't all over the internet already, given that by Cummings' own recent admission, he told a ton of people before the episode aired that Will was going to be shot and killed. In his own words, I told everyone. Cumming even said he told the hairdresser at a fashion event he went to, adding that a hairdresser, quote, is statistically the worst person you can tell a secret to. Cumming also also noted surprise himself that his spoiler leak didn't transcend word of mouth and end up online, while claiming to be decidedly more tight-lipped these days, especially given that he's now the host for the American version of the hit game show The Traitors. Don't want to go spoiling that one, mate. You really don't.